Next, section 6.5 includes minimum requirements for exhaust airflow. The standard clarifies that these exhaust requirements must be met regardless of which of the three ventilation procedures is used. The intent is to remove contaminants at their source by exhausting air directly from those spaces. This section includes two compliance paths, a prescriptive path and a performance path. When using the prescriptive path, you simply look up the required exhaust airflow rates in a table, similar to the ventilation rate procedure. And then the exhaust system is to be operated at this rate whenever the space is in use. On the other hand, the performance path is similar to the IEQ procedure. It requires you to identify all the contaminants of concern and their concentration limits. And then the exhaust system must be designed to actively monitor these contaminant levels and modulate the exhaust airflow to avoid exceeding the concentration limits. Regardless of which compliance path is used, this section clarifies that makeup air, that's the air that replaces any air being exhausted, that makeup air can be comprised of outdoor air, recirculated air, or air transferred from another ventilation zone. This provides flexibility for the designer. When using the prescriptive path in the standard, here's an excerpt from the table listing minimum exhaust rates for those specific occupancy categories where contaminants are likely to be generated. For example, a janitor's closet must be designed to exhaust one CFM per square foot of floor area when in use. Note that for toilet rooms, the exhaust rates are based on the number of water closets or urinals installed. A private toilet room is intended to be occupied by only one person at a time, with the lower rate of 25 CFM allowed if the exhaust operates continuously. Otherwise, the higher rate of 50 CFM is required if the fan turns on with a light switch, for example. For a public toilet room, the lower rate of 50 CFM per unit is permitted, but the higher rate of 70 CFM is to be provided where periods of heavy use are expected to occur. Now, returning to our example office floor, Recall that we have a janitor's closet and two restrooms. Based on the one CFM per square foot listed in the table, the exhaust airflow from the janitor's closet must be 200 CFM. And then, based on 50 CFM per unit, 150 CFM must be exhausted from each of the two restrooms. So the exhaust system must be designed for a total of 500 CFM. 